Well, here we are, man. We are four oh. days away from the preseason opener. For a lot of people, this is four years in the making. 44 players uh, vying for 23 spots. 32 days. I can help you guys over here if you're ready. I can scan you over here. For NHL franchise number 32. Right here, I'll, I'll scan you guys in. To meet up. All right, there you go, I'll enjoy. And lace up at a billion dollar new arena at Seattle Center. How freaking fired up are you? One of our Kraken players there. It will take a Herculean effort for a once mythical proposition to get Kraken. Countdown, I love it. Hey Zeke, we're gonna keep going a little further, I think. All the way. This was the day that, that I had circled on my calendar. I have to, you know, I'll be honest with you. Hey, there's one of them. I see a Kraken player. There's one what? There's some of our Kraken players there. With any new project, it is important to have a good foundation. So this is cool because it's the first ever one ever in Seattle for the Kraken. So it's a pretty special thing. You know, you build from day one. I mean, I think we're going to be a hardworking blue collar team. A lot of guys who are going to play good on both sides of the puck. Oh, hey Zeke, you want to go over here? This guy's pointing to you. Come with me. We're going to head over to the goalie and get a puck from this guy. Yeah, this to you, all right? Hey, thanks so much. Thanks. Say thank you real loud. Hey. Awesome. Oh, that's so cool. It's kind of broken. That's okay, because it's broken because it's a used one, like an official one. You got it from the goalie. Wow. Such an amazing opportunity. This is something that you, it's a once in a lifetime thing. The first day of training camp, the first in Seattle Kraken history. It's for sure real now. <laughs> Already a victory, considering the challenges that have been overcome. One, two, two three. three. Groundbreaking on the $80 million Northgate Iceplex was February 27th of 2020. The next day, the country changed. This is Kara L. Fallen with King 5 News. One person has died from coronavirus in Washington state. With the announcement of the first COVID death in America and right in Seattle's backyard, this foundational piece thanks to hundreds of construction workers, was finished in 18 months. It's amazing, it's beautiful. We were just walking through the store and we're like, wow, they built this within, I think what's a year and a half or two years, so it's crazy. You know, it wasn't just, we're building this facility, we're building the Climate Pledge downtown. You know, we're looking at building the, the one in Palm Springs. There's a lot of things going on, but we've had a lot of great people have chipped in a lot of different areas to, to get to this point. And it's been, uh, been a solid team effort for sure. The focus now. That guy, that guy, that guy. Having a solid team on the ice. That guy, that guy. And off. With an expansion franchise, veteran leadership will be important. And Mark Giordano may be the definition of it. The defenseman is new to Seattle after spending a decade and a half in Calgary. Chris Drieger 
and Philip Rubauer are expected to be two of the anchors of this team in goal and are still settling in. We're going to be a hardworking team. We're not going to score like probably 10 goals like Colorado did, but we're going to be a hardworking group for sure. How's everybody doing? Good, thanks. Everybody was here early. Everybody was excited to get going, and overall, it was it was a good first day, you know, for everybody to uh, you know to get under their belts. Coach Dave Hackstall has the task of naming a travel squad in a matter of hours. Whether to skate veterans like Jaden Schwartz, who came to Seattle via St. Louis and has an emotional tie to the city. or Brandon Tannen with his six years of experience and one wild main. There's, there's a balance. What we like to do is put some combinations together and see what that chemistry looks like. Things are going to happen quick. We play an exhibition game in two day, three days. We're going to have to have a combination of building our systems through our practices. If there is one answer on this first day, it is to the one question that has lingered ever since that day when the country changed. Uh, I've had a couple guys ask me that and I've, I kind of didn't, uh, didn't answer it. I have had conversation with the league and they're fine with me commenting on that, so we are 100% vaccinated. 100%. Yeah. Cool. All right, thank you all for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks everybody, see you tomorrow. Okay, so are we ready to go? It's gonna get a little bit louder. Let's see what happens. Conditioner down, augers on. Well, I've been doing this for uh, about 28 years now. All right, there goes my water. Iggy Tarajas could be called an ice king. Here we go. Nice. Bring it out, pick up my line. Put that tire right on my last line. My dad worked in a factory, uh, Harrison Radiator, back in Buffalo, New York. It just didn't seem like the fit for me. Even though I was an industrial art major in school, I just happened upon this and decided, well, it's pretty clean. I got into this business uh, back in Portland, Maine, back in 1994 as a part-time gig doing security at a uh, 10,000 seat multi-purpose facility in lovely downtown Portland, Maine, Cumberland County Civic Center. And I was just a security guard. Hockey games, concerts, that kind of thing. And uh, I did a part-time ZAM driver for the kids that were using the ice. I started doing that. I started driving part-time. like a secondary job. I was working at the Portland Water District at the time. It's been a long, strange Zamboni trip since. Oh, that yeah, looks pretty good. To become the head ice maker at the Kraken Community Iceplex. I like to turn my water off when I get in the corners because I've already done making there. I don't want to add too much water. The ice temperature itself, minerals, taking those out of the equation so you have better heat transfer. And we have 10,000 gallons of water in here to make one inch of ice. That's a lovely looking sheet of ice right there. Oh, there's a flare. Oh yeah, practice jerseys today too. How you doing? It's my son, Harrison. Harrison, how are you, man? <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I know. He was hoping to get it signed, but I just found out NHL, I guess, put the kibosh on that, right? Yeah, you know what the best thing to do? Go up against here when they're standing there and do a selfie. Yeah. That's the way to Good idea. Oh, there's the goalie. I think their goalie is 6 2, I think. In just the second day of training camp, questions continue to circulate about the guy wearing the red jersey. You know, I don't have a timeline for him right now. He's on, I mean, he's on his return to play protocol. Uh, it's good to see him out there with the group, uh, obviously limited. Yanni Gord is a back-to-back -back Stanley Cup winner with the Tampa Bay Lightning. 
expected to be a frontline Kraken star. He's still recovering from off-season shoulder surgery. I would say he's definitely ahead of schedule. As we're finding out, he's a guy that's, uh, that's sort of tough to hold back, but he's, uh, he's really worked hard and rehabbed hard. I wouldn't use the word surprised. Every player is a little bit different in the way they come back off of an injury. You know, there's, there's a protocol in place for, for Yanni, and um, he's an extremely hardworking uh, player. Uh, he's a very dedicated individual, I and mean, he's going to continue doing everything he can, I know, day by day to, you know, to be on that timeline. The Kraken also have a couple other cup winners in Vince Dunn and Jaden Schwartz. Yeah, I like like the colors. I mean, the jerseys are awesome. And Who won it as members of the St. Louis Blues. Just looking at him, it's someone I look up to, someone who's who's been really good to me since my first couple years in St. Louis and into the league. So um, to have him here and to see uh, you know the, the huge opportunity he has to, to come become a huge uh, piece for our team, um, that's really nice for him. You know, he was, he was such a good player for us in St. Louis. He was a big part of us winning there. Everyone's in a unique you know, situation where everyone's new and we don't really know each other, so we can all kind of bond over that and get to know each other a little bit, a little bit better. It's just about learning guys' um, tendencies and, you know, it's a little bit of a different system than I'm sure a lot of us are used to. And it's just been, uh, I think we've done a good job keeping it light and making it fun. I think that's the key, you know, making sure everyone's coming to the rink and enjoying it. A first scrimmage reveals some players moving a little faster than others, like the guy already dubbed Turbo. His name is Brandon Tanev. Yeah, I think. Uh... Camp's been at a high pace, you know. Uh, coaching staff's done a great job of getting on the ice and putting us together and, and working as a team. But I mean, my job is to come out here and, and, and work hard, play a, a 200 foot game, and, and be a great teammate and, and bring energy to the group. I want to be a, one of those guys you can rely on and at the same time push the pace and, and uplift the group when we need it. Center Morgan Geeky, who played junior hockey in the Tri Cities, is also turning heads, but unsure if he'll play. I have no idea. Okay. Wish I could tell you, but I can't. Kiki, I don't know. I didn't know too well, but he seems like a super, super skillful, skillful, skillful guy, and he can he can really rip it. He can he, he can score goals. The answer will come soon enough. It's going to be the first uh, unofficial official time we put on the Kraken jersey, so I think that's going to be really special for for the group that's playing tomorrow. Whoa! Anyone else? Thank you guys. Yep. Take care. Happy Kraken game day. Yeah, so. It's really cool that it's all finally happening. The Kraken will play their first exhibition game on the road since their soon to be home is still under construction. The Lilac City may not be known for sea creatures. But it does have some rabid hockey fans. Can you get a picture of mom and I real quick, Kathy? I own a hat, a shirt, and a lanyard already. And your car? And my car's got a sticker on it and a license plate. Pretty much got everything already. The S may stand for Seattle. There we go. All right. But it doesn't matter in Spokane. In front of these fans, we get set for preseason game number one. Here we go, here we go. Here we go, boys. Here we go, boys. The Seattle Kraken face off against the Vancouver Canucks. Let's get Kraken. It's going to be fun. That's all I care about. The Seattle Kraken, mishandled. Yeah. Tanev walks in. Oh. Shut down by Seelogs. Come on, Tanev. Here's Jack Rathbone with a shot. He scores. Out of the scrum, Bastion in front. Shane scores. 
Jonas Donskoy, Chalotsky again. This way, McCann, a shot. He scores! Short side, Stinger! The Kraken beat the Vancouver Canucks 5-3 behind a pair of goals from Geeky, who played in the Spokane Arena during his time in the Western Hockey League. Oh! Oh! oh, oh. And the opportunity to, to come here to, to Spokane and play in front of you know this this kind of a crowd on night number one of the exhibition season was uh, was awesome a good start before the first real road trip north of the border oh, yeah, oh, holy cow. Jaden Schwartz was one of the hottest free agents on the market kind of like that opportunity to come and, and play with you know, a bunch of new guys coming to a new city and, you know, starting starting something new. A durable goal-scoring winger and former number one pick who signed with the Kraken and has a connection to Seattle like no other teammate. Uh, Ten years ago, I was out here for a little bit uh, with my sister and my family. Mandy Schwartz was an acclaimed hockey player in her own right at Yale before being diagnosed with leukemia and treated in Seattle. It was tough, right? She was uh, she couldn't really do a whole lot with everything that she was going to going through. So every time she'd get outside or go do something, you know, she took advantage. She loved loved hockey, loved sports, um, loved being active. Jaden also dealt with heartbreak last year with Dad Rick. Well, my mom lives in in Regina now. Um, my dad passed on November 9th um, from a sudden heart attack. Um, it was out of nowhere, um, and my sister. Uh, passed away a little over 10 years ago from cancer, but she did a cord blood transplant in Seattle. That was the best place we could go for it. Jaden says he did want to be closer to his Saskatchewan roots, and he does plan on reconnecting with the philanthropic community as he gets settled and the season rolls on. I mean, it's, it's close to home, it's close to Canada, which is nice, uh, but I like this area of the country. Um, you know, with the mountains, and I just, I just find it uh, refreshing to be here. And um, you know, I find there's lots to do. And like I said, being a, being a part of a new franchise is, is pretty special. Alberta, Canada. Home of the Canadian Rockies and wide open spaces. It is also oil country. Hence the nickname of the National Hockey League team which plays in the league's northernmost city of Edmonton. Inside a palace known as Rogers Place. Where two hockey stars light the lamp night after night. Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl won the last two Hart trophies for most valuable player in the league and are coached by a guy who helped Seattle get started. I know how much hard work's gone into that, and you see the name, you see the jerseys. I mean, they look like an outstanding organization. You know, the early designs of some of those things that uh, I was involved with, are, it'll be intriguing to see, but I think it's going to be a fantastic franchise, just from ownership to management. Dave Tippett was a Seattle advisor and one of the franchise's first employees before he left for Edmonton, helping with planning out the arena and even the Kraken name. I think it's excellent. I, I, I got to say I had a little hesitation about Kraken first because I thought it was more a cartoon character, but the way they've depicted it in the uniforms, I think it's outstanding. Young Kyler Yamamoto, born and raised in Spokane, also plays for the Oilers and admits he's itching to return for a game against Seattle. It's going to be a super fun game. Talking to my parents, I think I have 
buttload of um, you know friends and family. <laughs> um, but That's the technical term, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The Oilers will play their A team in this exhibition clash, the first with fans at home since the start of the pandemic, while the Kraken will try out some new names. The Seattle Kraken for the first time have made their way north of the border. And tonight from Edmonton, this is preseason game number two. With a Seattle newcomer behind the microphone. This opportunity that's so invigorating, re-energizing for me, and it's a, I just draw a lot, of, a lot of energy from fans. It will be a special night inside Rogers Place. The fans are back. And sit back and enjoy preseason game number two. But John Forsland is a veteran. Mike Smith awaiting in the trapezoid where he can handle. A pro's pro in the broadcasting business. Mike Smith on the centering pass, and here come the Oilers. Yes, the Pugliarvi with a shot headed down by Chris Trigger. And his team with former NHL player JT Brown. I've done this once before, and when Hartford moved to Raleigh back in the 90s, it wasn't anywhere close to the excitement or the buildup that this team has. So I'm absolutely pumped up and, and can't wait to get each step completed and, and get to the regular season. Will Borgen, McDavid, what a save by Drieger. The number one thing is to build trust with your fans. Icing is called right here. So we have to deliver a high standard in terms of our broadcast. Tyson Berry, one-timer McDavid, rubbed out by Lausanne, and Drieger took care of the rebound. We also have to educate. He's double teamed, now McDavid for Hyman, a give and go, and a paddle down that time for Drieger on Zach Hyman, and it comes back out to center ice. But I think what you have to do is bring uh, NHL broadcast to the fan base first. It's not as cold as it was before. He is fresh off his playing career, and because of that, it's raw and it's real. It's a great individual effort there from Darnell Nurse. He has a tough side to him, but he also has a little bit of finesse game here. And he's a natural at this, and he's only going to get better, and I think we have tremendous chemistry already in a short period of time. Cole Lynn broken up, drying sidle out in front, forked wide. I'm expecting them to be in and around a playoff spot and then have all the momentum of, uh, of the fans at CPA kind of lift them towards that goal and get them into the playoffs. Off the stick of Drieger to the wall. On this night, here's Connor McDavid, the Oiler captain through the slot. Forslund's broadcast was better than the Kraken's performance. McDavid, what a goal! Zach Hyman, and what a pass by Connor McDavid. 3-0, Edmonton. McDavid and Dreisaitl both showed up on the scorecard. The Oilers drilled the Kraken 6 0. Um, I think it's just kind of getting to know each other. Obviously, it's a new team and, and new beginnings and everything. So I think we're, everyone's still trying to, you know, uh, iron out the kinks of the system. The game gets away from us, I guess, if you want to say that. But um, you, know, you look at it, the last game against. Vancouver, they they were up and we came back. So um, I mean, you're never really out of it. You know, I thought there were nights, there there were areas tonight where our competitiveness dipped. You know, guys are fighting for jobs, um, and that's an area that we're looking at. And you know, we we came up short in in some of those areas tonight. That's good. All right, thank you. The road trip continues tomorrow down Highway Two. One of the Kraken returns home to a place where he has legendary status. For Mark Giordano, what's old is new again. Yeah, the weather's been great. Yeah, we've been to uh, the aquarium, went out to the beach the other day with the kids. We're going to check out the zoo soon. We're, we're a bit uh, overwhelmed of how many different things there are to do. Nice, nice restaurants in, in a lot of different nice uh, areas. He's played his entire 15-year career in Calgary. I like to always say to people, like, I definitely wasn't the best player on my team growing up through the years. And as I got older and, and uh, more serious about hockey, I become became more serious on the off-ice stuff, the training, all that sort of thing, and uh, worked my way into the American League and then, uh, you know, got some games in the NHL. And I understood that 
I'm an older guy with one year left on my contract, so was, the possibility of getting exposed was pretty realistic from the start. I, I've been through a lot, obviously, my family and myself. Uh, my sister was in a car accident and passed away when I was 14. She was uh, 21, so just things like that when you go through them in life, and it brought our family real, really closer together. But facing uh, adversity and, and real-world problems, I mean, to be able to come out and play a game and do that for a living and enjoy every day coming to the rink. Don't mean to repeat myself, but try not to take any, any day for granted. Giordano was also the early favorite to be named team captain. I think I can be a leader on this team. I think uh, we have a young team. I think I can help a lot of the young guys out, but all that, you know, it's up to obviously coaching staff and management and all that. And there's a lot of different things that go into that decision. I I'm not worried about being the captain or, or any of that. one point in time, Calgary, Alberta was best known for the Stampede. The population has surged in recent years thanks to a burgeoning tech industry. It is now the third largest city in Canada, more cosmopolitan than Cowtown, and nestled against the Canadian Rockies, looks more like Denver or Salt Lake different than when it served as an Olympic city or when the Saddle Dome opened a half a decade before that in 1983. The same year Mark Giordano was born. A serendipitous connection not lost when number five hits the ice here, a grizzled veteran in a similarly aged building. Hey, hey guys. <laughs> How are you? How's everyone? Yeah. You had anything interesting this summer? Yeah. Yeah. Quite a bit, actually. Giordano may be Calgary's equivalent to Mariners Hall of Famer Edgar Martinez, who, oh, by the way, played in this city too. Just trying to adjust the little, little things that we do differently in, on our team and uh, go from there. Geo skated here for 15 seasons before being drafted by the Kraken. Tonight will be his first night in the Dome in an opponent's sweater. For me personally, that's quite sad. You know, I've known them for a really long time and they're friends of, of mine and, you know, certainly assets to this community and our team and really good people, really fun. Candace Goody leads the Flames Foundation and says Giordano and his wife Lauren have been community pillars. We started the same year. <laughs> you know, we had different roles, but yeah, it was similar timelines for sure. There's so many words that I would use and really they are incredibly humble and incredibly generous and do things for the right reasons. And they really hope that nobody finds out, <laughs> which is something that's quite unique and rare. And you know, as the team, you're trying to tell those stories all the time. So you're really trying to force that out of them sometimes, but they're just really, really good people. Team Geo was a program that they created. And before that, they had worked with Habitat for Humanity on a program that they created. They were really interested in making sure that they could serve underserviced youth in Calgary. You know, they really went towards schools. I would say that one, it felt a little heartbroken. I, it just felt he was so much a part of this community. And for me, it just represented, he felt like he was a Calgary and he just embraced this city so well. Mike Franco is a longtime friend. He has a history, like so many people from the Italian community, where your parents came over, and it was about hard work, it was about sacrifice, and it was about community. He brought that to the hockey team, and then when you saw him, what he brings to the community, it was the exact same thing. Yeah, How many sandwiches have we made today? Uh, we made up 80. Oh, amazing. We're a family food retailer that's been around for about 60 years. You know, we have a big selection of uh, different cheeses, meats, and uh, 
all different types of uh, ingredients in order for you to uh, make a beautiful meal at home. And one of the best cheese walls in town. We we're just trying to find ways to, uh, you know, reach, uh, you know, food securities for children. You know, a lot of people were losing their jobs at that time. So we reached out to Mark and Lauren and uh, Team Giordano and, you know, instantly we had a connection because we had a common goal of uh, looking at food securities for children. The Giordano's served up sandwiches with little fanfare. Trying to get those guys to brag about what they actually do in the community is painful. They will not. Helen Nolan Walls runs Education Matters, a foundation that supports Calgary public school kids with food, literacy, and life skills, and says the Giordano's have been big yet silent supporters of the organization, which helps kids in 243 schools. She, like others, says she'll have a hard time rooting against him. Lucky Seattle, like you guys are getting an absolute gem. I don't have terrible allegiance when it comes to hockey anyway, but I, my allegiance will follow Mark. I will root for him regardless because he's just a good guy. You know, I was talking about this with my daughter and you know, one of the first things she said is she goes, Dad, can we get a Seattle Kraken Mark Giordano jersey? And I was, uh, you know, I didn't know how I felt about that. Um, at first it was kind of a little bit weird, but uh, you know what, he's a good man and uh, it's not hard to uh, root for him even though he's on, uh, on a different team. No, it's not tough to cheer against him. To, uh, we want to see the Flames win, but I will say we all will always like to see success for Mark. Uh, just 20 or 30 other times a year, just not when they, you play the Flames. I mean, I hope like we finish one and they finish two, but um, definitely wish them success. <laughs> Well, preseason continues as we move south in the province of Alberta. Preseason game number three and a special night for Mark Giordano. Nice to have Gio come back. I'm sort of excited to see him back in the dome. One of the greatest Calgary Flames of all time. He's irreplaceable. He was the captain. He was the heart of the team. He's a great leader on both on and off the ice. He was great on the ice, he was great in the community, and he will be in Seattle. We weren't ready for it, but sort of understand it. Oh, Canada, we stand on God. Seattle's lucky to have him. Sit back and enjoy preseason game number three tonight from Calgary, Alberta. And in storybook fashion, Gio did not disappoint. By Everly, here's Giordano. He scores! How about that? Mark Giordano goes five hole on Dan Pladar. There's the big story. Scoring the game's first goal en route to Seattle's 4-3 overtime shootout victory. Super happy for him. I know it was probably a little... Uh, kind of a weird feeling for him coming back and, and playing. I was just just super happy for him. You could tell he was you know he was enjoying that moment and he spent so many years here and did a lot for this city and team and you can tell how well he's respected. We've got some decisions to make over the next few days. You know the, the time is getting pretty short in terms of putting things together for opening night. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks. After the exhibition Thrilla in Alberta, the Kraken head back to Western Washington. And the calendar is shrinking. As the Kraken try to find the glue of their team, the paint is drying. The lights are lit, and the final nails are being put into their future home. You get a vision of a building in your head when you're working on it. are so happy the way the windows to the north turned out. Ken Johnson oversaw the construction of Climate Pledge Arena. Seattle, the NHL is thrilled to welcome you. And Seattle was awarded the Kraken on December 4th of 2018. Dirt started getting moved the following day at the old Key Arena site with the plan of preserving the roof and nothing else. You know, the old building was about 400,000 square feet. This is 800,000. Yet we're not increasing the seating capacity much. We're just building the space that fans makes it a better experience for the fans. 
Yeah, it was an engineering marvel. We, we had to really put the, this 44 million pound roof up on stilts. So you really enter this building at the upper concourse. The majority of the arena is subterranean. The floating of the roof was as complicated as any engineering project I've ever been associated with. You know, really a year and a half ago, we're smack getting on a roll of construction and someone comes in, you know, in and says, we may need to shut down. And we worked and we never did shut down. But all the workers, you know, some total, we had 6,000 different workers, tradesmen, coming here, suiting up every day, if you will, putting on their masks. You know, we saved the roof, and it actually ended up being a really strong structural roof. But we started, we went right the underneath of it, checked everything, because we knew we'd be living with this for another 50, 100 years. Then we said, how do we improve the acoustics? And we have thousands of these, if you look, acoustic panels, really they're pillows. It just absorbs so the sound doesn't bounce around. It's been a long journey. Um, it was a difficult process and a difficult uh, vision to begin with. Tim Liewicki helped to broker the $1.15 billion privately financed deal with the city while putting his name on the line, as well as his new company called the Oakview Group. You know, when you go through COVID and you're trying to convince the banks to finance a place like this, yeah, you, there, it's some really tough moments. But we, I knew we'd get it built. I knew it. I knew we'd get it open. Do you think anybody ever tries it again? It won't be me. <laughs> I haven't celebrated any of this in six years. I didn't celebrate when we won. It was, let's get to work. I didn't celebrate with the 32,000 season tickets because that's just the start. Now we have a debt and an obligation back to them. But at the end of the day, for me, it's watching the Kraken fans come into this building. That'll be good. Then I'll celebrate and probably have one very stiff drink. <laughs>
Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see how that, uh, that metric ultimately plays out. You know, I think e-commerce was at a different place five years ago than it is today, and I'm sure that has a lot to do with it. My true metric will be what percentage of fans at our game tomorrow night are wearing our, our products. I think winning is always important, but I would just encourage the fans to give, you know, give the organization uh, the opportunity to put their plans in place. If he skates over here, I need to take a picture and send it to my friends. And For Paul Buxton, this has almost been a spiritual journey to the desert. Ten years, uh, multiple different arena deals, right, you know, and uh, just uh, the ups and downs of it. You know, there are moments where it really was a pipe dream. Full circle, it's, it's just an incredible feeling to, to just be here and experience it. Something we've wanted for a very long time. He was one of those fans who went to every Seattle rally, every council meeting. And even came here four years ago for the night's first game. So this is the original sign. Holding a sign that Seattle was next. Kind of a dream come true, basically. You know, honestly, we've been talking about it for so long, it's kind of surprising that it really is actually happening. We said it a bunch of times this weekend. I, I can't believe we're here. All right, cheers. We made it. Cheers. It, it's felt like forever that we were in the ticket, season ticket line. We watched the city council meetings in Glendale when we thought the Coyotes were going to move. We've watched this process the whole way, so it's kind of surreal to be here. But who will be on the ice is another story. That's just another reminder. I mean, we, we have a fully vaccinated team and uh, the virus uh, is still still around. A handful of Kraken frontliners are in COVID protocol. Again, all we can do as players now, we're, the guys who are here, we uh, follow the protocols. We hope for the best with uh, obviously our teammates. Mark Giordano will not be one of them. In fact, as many suspected, he will be the team captain for this inaugural season. For me, is is pretty, uh, you know, something I don't take for granted. So it's pretty cool to be a part of this today and looking forward to it. I've been looking forward to this one for a long time and now it's finally here. Everyone's ready to go. I think there's a lot of excitement in there. I think uh, no matter what anyone tells you, um, I've played a lot of games in this league. There'll, there'll be some nerves uh, uh, before puck drop and I think the best way to get rid of those is to have that first shift, have a bump, uh, make a good play, uh, get involved physically, stuff like that. So I just, I just said that, that that first 10 minutes, it's you know you're playing in Vegas, it's like that here all the time. Let alone the the opener, you know they're going to come with a lot of energy. Their crowd's going to be have a lot of energy, but we can feed off that too and try and counter that and, and play our game. I mean, I, w I was here four years ago for this game. That's why this this sign is now this. So. It, that's the meaning behind it. Paul Buxton was first in line, along with friend John Barr. Three, two, one. <laughs> Waterworks right now. Waterworks, yeah. We did it. Dude, this we did is, it. This is crazy. Yeah. I have trouble describing it because it's a range of emotions from, you know, just sentimental, just the, the journey to get here. I gotta, I gotta capture this. Here we go. Go, This is the gravy. We can be fans now. Like, we don't have to go to city council meetings. We don't have to advocate and try to get people to show up at rallies. I mean, I can't wait for Climate Pledge to open and that home opener is gonna be probably more emotional than tonight. And to do it with a bunch of Seattle friends. By showtime, the COVID scare went away and the Kraken were at near full strength. After spotting the Knights three early goals, Seattle scored three to tie it up before losing it by a blade or a golden knight kick into the net. Thoughts on that uh, game-winning goal? Uh, what are you asking? I, I mean, guess I... It's, sorry, it's, it felt like there was a little bit of just gray area on the call, right? Kind of click on either yeah, one. Yeah, you guys can make your own decision. I mean, I, I know what I saw and what I believe, but uh, the call was made that it was a good goal. So, you know, there's gray area in, in terms of, uh, of those calls. But there is no gray area about what's next. 
The Kraken will play four more on the road before finally playing officially on home ice for the very first time. It's a night where a lot of people have family in town and a lot of people that are excited about the event, you know, of our first game here. The rink and like the setup down there is incredible. So we're really pumped to play in front of our fans. We're getting to be a part of something that not many guys are gonna gonna be able to say they, they have at the end of their career and, and in the history of the game. So it's it's a gonna be a pretty uh, special moment for us as players, for our organization, for the city, for everyone involved, the whole whole city has scheduled that uh, day in, uh, on their calendar, so it's, it's going to be awesome. It is fitting in the Emerald City that opening night would happen somewhere under the rainbow. Can't get much more Seattle than a little sunshine and a little sprinkle. This has been the night on the calendar for this 32nd franchise for longer than 32 days. So what's new? Uh, it's good to see everybody here. This is an exciting night for the NHL. Uh, based on my walking the streets of Seattle, seeing everybody dressed in Seattle gear, the buzz that's in the air, walking around this amazing building. Other than the roof, this arena has nothing to do with Key Arena. I, know, I can see our seats from here almost. They tore the whole place apart. It's completely new. It's going to be a really good show. Right now, looks like the ice is ready. The Zamboni's been out. I got towels on the chairs. It's time for hockey. In the entire process of this, we moved 3,300 miles across the country to Florida. Yeah, we're and season ticket holders that flew here from Florida and are flying here for most oh yeah. of the games. So wow. <laughs> it's going to be a yes. very exciting. That's we're and that, that's super what we're excited. here for. Go Kraken! I mean, that is custom. <laughs> yeah. So did it all myself. <laughs> Two. All right, thank you. Go Kraken! She wasn't alone in getting dressed up for the occasion. Well, I am a basketball guy, but I love hockey too. And I'm, uh, I'm just happy for the city to finally see hockey come to Seattle. Even the rain man ditched most of the green and gold for other Seattle colors. It's just an extra reminder for people. I'm here at the hockey game, but we definitely want the Sonics back. The first time they remodeled this place, it was a little so-so, but this, this time they got it right. And Wilson of Heart also isn't here to sing Barracuda. But to christen the complex and the Kraken as a member of Seattle's rock royalty. This is a beautiful arena. I mean, the, the climate pledge is like no arena I've ever seen. I hope the rest of the country takes heed. And some of the bands uh, coming in here and sports teams and stuff will check this place out and take the word back to their home cities. against the Vancouver Canucks almost felt like the undercard. And while the Kraken didn't win, that's not what will be remembered. I am super proud of the city and everybody that showed up and really like gave it their all. It's the idea that after two years of despair, 
of challenges to the collective psyche. People came together. That's my baby! To celebrate. Shout. And be happy. Uh, you know, well, at least we got a team now. After all these years of wanting a team, we got one. Yes, some stories don't have the Hollywood ending, but can inspire one to think the best is yet to come. After 32 days, there has been a rush to perform, a rush to finish. But for anyone who has followed this path, the blood, sweat, and tears have lasted much longer. There have been stops and starts along the way, stories that gave people false hope. But now, one thing holds true about this, the NHL's 32nd franchise. It's real. 